Good day. I'm Dr. Bob Henry, a professor of medicine, diabetologist at the University of California, San Diego, and at the VA Medical Center in San Diego. I'm going to talk very briefly about some new developments that have occurred and presented at the American Diabetes Association's 71st annual scientific sessions in June, last June, one month ago. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about what I thought was very interesting information yes. presented on the sodium glucose cotransporter 2 inhibitors, or SGLT2 inhibitors. There was a lot of information um, that was presented on, uh, there's many of them in development. Um, the two that are probably the furthest along is dapagliflozin, which um, just went to the endocrine panel yesterday um, and um, and also uh, canicaflozin uh, was uh, some information was presented on that, as well as some of the other um, SGLT2 inhibitors in development. I thought the the information that was presented was uh, consistent was more uh, consistent with what we've known in the past that the SGLT2 inhibitors are very effective in uh, over as an addition to a lot of different compounds in type 2 diabetes um, and um, it, it reductions in A1C sort of in the range of 0.5 to 0.8 or 0.9 percent again with a starting A1C of about 8 percent. Um, in the case of, of uh, uh, dapagliflozin there was a slight increase in both uh, urinary tract infections and in genital uh, in, in genital urinary um, candidiasis, balanitis, and vulvovaginitis, uh, small increases. Um, interestingly, there was a presentation uh, on, uh, by on canagaflozin in which they looked very carefully and made took diabetic patients, both men and women, uh, before and after 12 weeks of canagaflozin. And in patients who had no urinary in tract infections before, there was no increase after canagliflozin, 12 weeks of canagliflozin. So that was an interesting observation. Um, otherwise, uh, there was most of the information was just longer duration uh, data, mainly on dapagliflozin uh, with other compounds in combination with insulin, long-term studies up to a year, uh, in combination with sulfonylureas, and in combination with metformin, as well as monotherapy. Yeah, I thought I should just bring up a comment about yesterday, uh, July the 19th, FDA uh, endocrinologic um, board or panel review of dapagliflozin. Uh, the, uh, the vote was 6-4 uh, and 9 against approval, but um, it seemed from the discussions that I heard that, or the, the information that I heard, that many of the concerns of the uh, people who voted negative could be reasonably uh, well addressed um, and, and in fact probably um, this compound is approvable. Uh, that'll have, we'll know uh, by October of this year um, but clearly this is the first in, uh, in the class of compounds uh, that inhibit glucose reabsorption from the proximal convoluted tubule, and they're effective, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, the, the side effect profile will be um, mild enough that we'll be able to have the compound approved. Well, thank you for listening. If you need additional information, I'd encourage you to go to IDOT, idoc.org